the South Asian community in general, with the Indian community right now, the only thing that we have um, that we are um, concerned about, that, that we're worried about at this point of time, is the COVID situation in India. Uh, as you know, we can see uh, we can see images in social media, news, and when we talk to our family back in India, we can see what's going on. And this is something that is so tragic that is causing us, all of us, to stop and figure out how we can help. Uh, we're getting a lot of um, um, campaigns. We're getting a lot of um, uh, options in in social media for fundraisers. And one of the questions that we are getting asked quite a bit is. Where do we fund? Who do we fund? How do we know that the money that we are funding is going to the right causes, to the right places, et cetera? So I have with me um, an organization called Akam Foundation in India. Akam is a uh, NGO in India. Uh, Akam is also a Journeys customer. And we have Neelima Reddy, uh, who is uh, from Akam USA. And we have Kiran Morris, who's from Akam India. And we are going to ask a few questions here, simple questions that we get asked quite a bit, and we are asking ourselves and hoping that we can get answers for some of these questions. Nilima, what are we doing from a from a U.S. perspective uh, to uh, for both of these items? I know that you know I've been involved in the other aspects of it, but I know that you've been trying to do some fundraisers and things like that, right? Yeah. Thank you. So we have um, the 20 chapters across USA and we have a ton of youth volunteers, which are middle schoolers and high schoolers and a lot of dedicated adult volunteers. And they were all stepped into action and they're all creating fundraisers. And mm -hmm. we have some national fundraisers. Uh, we created one for oxygen and mm -hmm. we created one for the PPE food and nutrition kits, which are the emergency food supplies, as well as COVID protection kits. And of course, other hospital requirements since ACOM has been receiving um, the uh, requirements from hospitals for PPE, gloves, N95 masks, all kinds of things that we kind of take for granted here. Mm -hmm. And those have been requested by hospitals all across India, from mm -hmm. major hospitals to small uh, hospitals to district hospitals or primary health centers in villages. Uh, so we have a list of those to be fulfilled. And uh, we have a lot of donors coming forward in terms of individuals, even with any small donations saying, I would like to support this need or this particular mm -hmm. hospital requirements and some other organizations we're partnering with. Now, any donation is like uh, will go a long way, given that, you know, each dollar will go like 75 rupees in India. And it's almost like twenty five dollars will provide one month's rations for one family of four. Mm -hmm. And so there's no small amount, but of course, the need of oxygen is so immense. We just realized that there are about 250 oxygen concentrators that were requested from ACOM by the different hospitals in India mm -hmm. uh, across multiple states. Mm -hmm. And uh, each of them is cost, uh, cost about uh, $950. So we just now have a camp GoFundMe campaign for about 100000 and uh, that is the most immediate need um, that we need to do because without that, we cannot survive this instant uh, immediate crisis at least. Yeah. And um, the sustainability, long-term sustainability is something that ACOM is known for. And mm -hmm. all our chapters have adopted one district in India and they work with that district and they like to provide sustainable uh, options, whether it's livelihood, providing options to people in this COVID time, whether they can stitch masks and sell them, we train them and give them certain opportunities even to the local farmers in order to make these food kits so their produce doesn't go wasted when, in the absence of market opportunities. So those are the kind of things that the India team is doing on the ground. And our chapters and youth ambassadors have embraced that idea and they want to participate in that. So they have been sharing it. So the more important thing is really sharing and spreading the word about the kind of work that we're doing and connecting your family and friends so they can also contribute in one way or the other. We do have a lot of other events and depending on the talents of the chapter or the strengths of the chapter, New Jersey is doing a 5K run and um, Charlotte is doing a Mother's Day brunch. Acom Baton Rouge is doing a Kendra Scott fundraiser where you go to a restaurant or jewelry store and you get a portion of the proceeds and all our mm -hmm. volunteers are sharing it with across schools and to increase the you know, awareness. You know, I have reached out to a lot of local communities because mm -hmm. some of my friends and coworkers have been asking me how they can help because mm -hmm. everyone is seeing this on the oh, TV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And they just wanted to know, how can I give it to a proper organization, like you mm -hmm. said? 
and since they know me personally and they know that I'm involved with ACOM and I've assured them that all of us are volunteers. So most of us are full-time workers that take our time because this is our passion. So yeah. there is almost zero admin cost. There is no cost to any of us. And uh, so that helps for them when they know that 100% of their donation is going straight to the project, mm -hmm. to the person that needs it most. Uh, right. And that's what is helping. I've reached out to the local media to get the word out. So all of these are things that anyone can do uh, to kind of help us connect with more people that can work with ACOM USA. Gotcha. Um, great explanation. Uh, Nilba. I have to go back to the very beginning, though. You said that you're getting requirements from various hospitals. What do you mean you're getting requirements from various hospitals? So the needs at this time, because of obviously all the healthcare systems have been overburdened and overstretched. Uh, so if the doctors are scared to go see the patients without the proper PPE, they need a mask, they need a face shield, right. but some of them are not available immediately. And most of it is because of lack of funds. The hospital mm -hmm. is not prepared to buy the cement um, of the PPE mm -hmm. ahead of time too. Mm -hmm. So if we support them with funds, then they're able to get some of that equipment and others, we have to help them like oxygen uh, concentrators to get it from different places too. And uh, these requirements are like from a Ames, Delhi, uh, which is mm -hmm. the major institution, yeah. the pre premier institution in India. And mm -hmm. they need at least a hundred oxygen concentrators. And Mumbai, of course, because of the population, they have submitted like $700,000 worth of different types of uh, requirements of ventilators, uh, PPE masks, oxygen connectors, medications, and basic supplies even because they're running out of them. And without that, they cannot where, treat these patients. So where are you getting it from? I mean, how are you sourcing all of these things? Where are you getting the funds from? So these are individual donors most of the time. Until now, we've been reaching out to each and every one of the donors that have uh, been working with ACOM in the past. And mm -hmm. each of our volunteers goes out and reaches to their community in such mm -hmm. a passionate manner that it's making ripples. Hopefully, that's what we are getting them. And we have tried to partner and we've partnered with a couple of organizations, both here and in India, too. Some mm -hmm. of the corporate sponsors are coming forward. Mm -hmm. Ours was predominantly individual based, but we just mm -hmm. uh, partnered with the Dwani Foundation and uh, Gandhi Medical College Galum uh, Global Alumni Association. Mm -hmm. And they were each taken up one to three hospitals. They said, we will support these requirements. Wow. But that is out of a list of 50 hospitals that are still waiting to be supported. Gotcha. Gotcha. Actually, so, yeah. Just to add uh, to Nilima's, one of the major uh, requirements right now is uh, to kind of expand the hospitals. Mm -hmm. So we are working with uh, uh, most of the hospitals to expand because they are running out of resources. And whereas the corporate sponsors are ready to kind of help that expansion. So right now we just completed, uh, uh, you know, a pro three uh, hospital projects, 50 beds each, mm -hmm. one in uh, Pune, one in Hyderabad and one in Bangalore. So mm -hmm. we are kind of trying to work in different parts of the uh, you know, in India to expand hospital infrastructure. Gotcha. Do you work with any global organizations at all? Or is yes. it one, you know, one of the, uh, the, the major factors on all these large projects, we work with UNICEF, uh, Cognizant Foundation, Bosch, TVS, uh, all, a lot of these organizations who kind of, uh, you know, donate for these causes. Mm -hmm. And also we work with uh, the funding agencies like Give India, United, all of gotcha. this. Uh, so, so what's the difference? So you, you mentioned Give India. So what's the difference between giving to like a Give India versus giving to ACOM? Maybe Nilima? Yeah. So, I mean, it gives us a lot of credibility too when ACOM USA says we work with ACOM Foundation with the history that they've had and the recognition they've had with the work that was done. And when we show the work that has been done, uh, so we, we know that, you know, working with UNICEF, UNICEF comes to ACOM and says, let's partner and do this project shows us that it's real work being done. And uh, all the partners that um, receive funds from, uh, like Give India receives from Google, let's say, and mm -hmm. they actually look for partners like ACOM to work, do, do their work. Even the government hospitals, uh, even the government agencies and private companies that want to reach, whether it's food supplies or anything they want to give to the remotest villages, they know that ACOM staff is there and they know they can reach there and they actually work with ACOM in doing their project through ACOM. So you the have second people on the ground in all of these places. Yes. And that's yes. what helps us to be able to do things quickly and in a more effective manner. 
because we actually train health mentors in the villages. We've done this for years, so this is not something we have to do right now. Mm -hmm. So when we reach out to them and we built digital platforms over the last year, luckily, when we had a little break in COVID, because mm -hmm. our goal is to reach out to the highest pregnant mothers who may not be able to come to the clinic. But if we send a digital message and a YouTube video explaining how to take care of their health and to the mm -hmm. baby's health and provide them with these COVID protection kits and masks, that is having the maximum impact with the minimum money. That's like a cost-effective strategy. So our past experience is helping us in doing these initiatives, even in this COVID setting. Gotcha, gotcha, great. Um, anything else that, that you want to say to folks here? Again, people want to help. They're trying to, everybody's feeling a little helpless, right? And you know, one of the ways they know is by opening up their wallets and giving. And is there anything that you want to tell people here at all? Um, uh, definitely. Uh, I mean, both of us, I would say, uh, oh, pray for us, pray for everybody, pray for the world, because we need to contain this virus and that will really help. And spreading the word about it and becoming involved and taking action, do your part, whatever it is. And we have these channels that you can help with. So just connecting is uh, the best thing to do. Mm -hmm.